Thanks very much and a uh, warm welcome from me, from our company as well. So I'm going to tell you something about the reactivation of the historical Siemens bun. Um, is anyone uh, arriving by S bun this morning? Okay. Uh, did anyone arrive with the Siemens bun? Probably not, because the Siemens bun looks like this right now. And that's uh, going to change. So what uh, am I going to show you here? I'm going to tell you something about the, the project partners involved within this project, uh, why we did use ArcGIS GUBIM as a software for managing uh, stuff within the project, um, what we did for construction planning, what we did for surveying and how we uh, managed to model the uh, environment and some use cases uh, with ArcGIS GUBIM in a summary, of course. So we were in a project for Deutsche Bahn Netze, and they have um, made a project company, Siemens Bahn Ingenieur Gemeinschaft. And uh, this consists of Krebs and Kiefer and Sweco, and we were the surveying partner within this project. Uh, something about us we are situated in Berlin, near the river Spree, and uh, founded in 1992. We have office locations in Berlin, Hannover, and Eisenhüttenstadt about uh, 120 employees, and our headquarters is uh, situated right next there, so we can uh, take a swim in our breaks. Okay, which reasons did we have for choosing ArcGIS GeoBIM in this project? There is a connection between CAD, BIM, and uh, GIS data, cloud-based in one system, which was really handy. It was easy to work within the linked uh, data in the project, we could improve the collaboration between the project um, planning, the construction, surveying, architecture, engineering, all the departments that are involved within there, and efficient uh, decisions can be made. Of course, time and cost savings are important as well. Something about the project context, the Siemens Bahn is a former line of the Berlin S-Bahn light rail. It was established by Siemens and Halske about 100 years ago. And the plan is to go live again within the next four or five years. There are a couple of stations that are completely out of service for quite a long time, Gartenfeld, Wernerwerk and Siemensstadt. The track is about four and a half kilometers long and was taken out of service for different reasons in 1980. So the route leads over historic railroad viaducts, as you can see there. And this is a plan of the route that will take place. It's a branch from the um, Ring S-Bahn and going to the northwest in the direction of Spandau. This is what it looks like right now. So as you can tell, there needs to be reconstruction work done and uh, new bridges or new construction of the existing structure needs to take place. There are about 30 main engineering structures that uh, we have been taking care of in the surveying business and there needs to be uh, infrastructure for rail traffic, the stations need to be refurbished and um, they need to be connected to the main S-Bahn lines in Berlin. And we have the three stations that are out of service for quite a long time, and they need to be taken back into service and to be refurbished completely. So there is quite a demanding uh, planning situation due to the historical monuments that we are faced with here. Looks like a bit uh, of, uh, if anyone's interested in lost places, photography is a good place to go there. Looks uh, brilliant. And uh, the project goals are the usage of the in existing viaduct structure. And we um, have to provide a base for the recalculation, what needs to uh, be done in steel construction, masses, design features, and to provide the planning data for the refurbishing process. And our precise model serve as a base for that planning process. Right now, we are in the stage of preliminary planning and the commissioning is planned in 2029. Estimated costs about 500 million euros. Let's talk about that in a couple of years if we are still talking about 500 millions 
We will see. I can't tell you. My guess is might go up a bit. OK, um, we did the surveying of uh, the old Wernerberg station and the connected elevated railway infrastructure. And we created BIM models with a great detail level, LOD 400, which is very fine grained of the viaducts. And that's uh, outstanding level of detail if you compare it with other in inventory projects that have taken place before that. And we integrated all the gained data in 3D models in ArcGIS GeoBIM and connected it with Autodex uh, Construction Cloud. Sun? So that's a colleague of mine. A song, OK. And um, <laughs> what we see here is a laser scanner mounted on a post. And uh, we did 48 double track railroad viaducts of the elevated line that you can see on top here on the picture. We scanned the whole station, so the reception building, the roofing, if it was still intact, and the stairs and the surrounding terrain. And we used the uh, terimetrical uh, cadastra for the shaft cadastra, so cable, sewage, service water, and the guide systems. Oops. So personal support was involved in the project. As you can tell on the left, that's me. I'm, I took uh, a chance to do a bit of serving as well. And a tight project budget, so involvement of child labor. My son took part in the project as well and managed to do some BIM modeling stuff. And that's what we gained from the um, modeling process. You can see here the detail level on the left side. You can see the latest scanning data that we gained. And uh, on the right side, there are the modeled components of the historical viaduct. So it's uh, yeah, very detailed. You can see every part of it. And you, if uh, it's modeled correctly, you know how many steel is built in there and uh, which parts are within the construction. Within ArcGIS GeoBIM, we were able to integrate some other geodata in the project, so the land use plan, the digital terrain model, 3D models of environments and buildings, and um, we used GIS analysis tools for getting a profile, surveying profile, visibility analysis, shadow casts, weather and stuff like that, so things that you can't really do in, Arc, uh, in, in Autodesk and you're able to do within the GIS environment. And um, we could use the, the platform within the cloud to involve all the stakeholders in the project. So um, we used an editor, and you could uh, comment some parts of the project. You could uh, uh, provide location descriptions. You could uh, do a photo documentation in the project site documentation, and you could also do classical BIM issue management, so collision detection within the model, if there is anything that uh, might cause problems in the future that you can already see within the um, model structure. You can uh, use a time slider for uh, getting to know where did the um, problems occur within the project on a, on a time scale, and you could edit the features in ArcGIS GeoBIM or in the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Right, so for the summary of the project, it was a very efficient technology for surveying that we used there. For the special infrastructure, the um, planning for the uh, survey site is crucial, especially within uh, historical buildings like that. We managed to capture the details very precise. It was fast field work that could be done with the laser scanning, faster than we first approximated. So it was rather cost effective. And uh, the gained model is um, modeled in according to the BIM methodology. And we derived detailed building informations. So the model that we created is sufficient for the works and the constructions that are ahead of the project for the reactivation of this track. 
and we could uh, get all the characteristic features from the data that we needed. Yeah, so time and cost servings, we integrated 2D and 3D in the cloud for all the participants. We used the analysis tools. We used the issue management for collision detection, uh, editing. We could add comments and documents on the project. We could exchange um, with all the stakeholders in the project. And the um, BIM model can be viewed in, in all necessary contexts. So, yeah, it was, I think, a very good project that we had so far. It was interesting to see how you can manage to capture these old structures within very new and modern technology. And to close, I have some pictures that we've taken on the old uh, stations that I think are, yeah, quite uh, interesting to see. So, wo bleibt denn der Zug? It uh, takes a bit of time before the train is rolling there. And these are some uh, impressions from the station building of Wernerberg. So as you can tell, there's uh, quite a lot of things to do that uh, need to take place on the track. OK, so that's so far from me, and if there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them for you. Or thanks for your attention. <laughs>